Hello, everybody. My name is Dean Ganey. I am currently a fifth grade teacher in Orlando, Florida. And recently I've been asked to share five tips that I would recommend for teaching remotely or teaching online or distance learning, however you refer to that, um, being able to meet the needs of our students in an online environment. And before I move any further, I just wanna congratulate all of you for the hard work that you have done, because really it isn't easy going from teaching in a traditional setup in a classroom and then going completely online and being able to meet the various needs or diverse needs of your students. Uh, and certainly some of those needs are really putting their minds at ease and letting them know that everything is okay, uh, even though we're in a new environment. And so I have come up with five things that I would say, based on my own experience, uh, based on the past three weeks of online learning, what I would say to teachers to try to keep them in the groove or encourage them as as they move forward. And so the very first thing that I would say is, let the students guide your process. Um, and so I think it's important because really teaching students um, is the goal. Uh, curriculum's great, but especially at a time like this, uh, when students need so much more than just a curriculum, I really believe that there's a social, emotional, learning piece that comes into play and really and truly it's showing them that you care and that you're here uh, for them even during this time that many of them may or may not understand completely so that's my first one let the students guide the process uh, i think the more that we can do that the more that we understand that um, it's about affecting lives and changing lives not so much focusing on uh, a curriculum um, number two i would say very the tools that you use. Um, I think it's very important to make sure that we are looking at using different kinds of things. Not only is it a multimodal approach, uh, we're dealing with different kinds of students that learn different kinds of ways. Um, I think it also just, it makes things more interesting and engaging when you're able to utilize multiple tools. Uh, not to mention it makes it more fun for me <laughs> or more fun for the teacher uh, when they're able to vary the different uh, resources or sources or tools or platforms. The next thing I would say is break up the time. Uh, one of the things I have practiced uh, is I'll jump on live with my students in the morning uh, for about an hour, hour and a half, but then I'll also come back in the afternoon for about 30 minutes uh, or more, depending on the needs of the students. And also um, just to kind of give them an opportunity to relax because the morning is typically dedicated to the more educational stuff. And then in the afternoons, I try to do some genius hour. I try to uh, get some games going on, kind of like game show. We played Little Fortune, we played Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. So those kinds of things, breaking it up, it helps you to be able to take your mind off of it. But imagine how much more that's gonna help our students if they can see that this is not insurmountable. Uh, they can achieve, they can continue to learn and grow, even if it is in little chunks of time. All right, number four, focus on the authentic. Um, I know that depending on where we are, our districts that we're in, we have certain things that we're expected uh, to pursue or to meet, certain things we're supposed to. But above all of that, what are the students going to be able to take away from what you're teaching? What are the students going to remember? They're going to remember those things that are authentic. Those things are, are created that are created based on what they need, based on uh, the students in the classroom at that present time. And so above all, I think it's important to be authentic because learning is something you want to not only be uh, limited to a year, you want it to go beyond a year. You want it to be a lifelong thing. And maybe something that you do authentically will uh, ignite a spark in your students that they'll be able to take with them even beyond this particular time in their lives. All right. Very good. The last thing I'll say, my tip number five, is teaching is not limited to academic subjects. And I've already kind of touched on that. And so what's my point of saying that? I mean, when you think about academic subjects, you have your math, your science, your reading, writing, social studies, you have all of those content areas. And those are certainly important or certainly uh, lots that you can jump into inside of those content areas. But there's a lot of things in, in that we don't necessarily get to do inside of those content areas. So really I'm saying don't limit yourself to that box. Um, we just need to have a round table discussion. What's on your mind? The whole genius hour aspect, right? Being able to broaden the horizons of our students and using this online opportunity as a medium for driving that. Um, and so I will 
end my little broadcast here by um, telling you a quote that is actually conveniently enough behind me. And so I want you all as educators to really keep in mind that you are the only you that will ever be. Your experiences, your story, your diversity. You are the only you that will ever be. Your experiences, your story, your diversity. And so all that you have, all that you can muster up to give your students in this particular time is not going to go to waste. They are ready. They are need, they need us uh, during this particular time in order to get through it, right? Until we are able to get back to a more traditional uh, classroom routine, whatever that happens to be in our various areas. So I hope something that I've said was encouraging or uh, insightful or even made you think, right? Um, and good luck as you go forward, as you continue to do what's best for your students, because at the end of the day, that's who we're here for. Take care.